Good morning. All right, a few of you are still awake. Don't worry, this will be quick. It's good to be back in Portland. <clears throat> I'm actually, uh, I used to live here. I'm actually a Portland State alum. So uh, me and the one other person in this audience that went to Portland State. <laughs> yeah, five, that's even better, great. <clears throat> um, today I wanna talk about the Node community and how we can uh, embrace the enterprise to actually grow that community. So I'm Joe McCann, I work at Node Source. We are the enterprise Node company. We offer up a suite of products and professional services that are explicitly focused on the needs of the enterprise. But we're also super passionate about the open source project as well. We have arguably the most institutional knowledge of Node under one roof. We have the most active core committers and contributors. And we even have Rod Vag uh, as our chief Node officer who leads the technical steering committee. Yeah. He couldn't be here because he's way out in Australia. Hi, Rod. I know you're watching the live stream. We've been extremely passionate from day one at NodeSource about the open source project, but also about growing the community. And myself and my co-founder, Dan Shaw, had this discussion early on in 2013 when we were actually determining whether or not we were going to start NodeSource. And we asked ourselves a very straightforward question. How can we double the size of the Node community in one year. And at this moment, we realized that, well, there are a number of developers that are in the Node community as it stands. And we want to continue to, to grow that base. We started to see community events over the past few years up to 2013 pop up in places like Ireland with NodeConf EU, Michael running the first NodeConf US, the NodeBots community events that started to take off worldwide, the Node Knockout event, a lot of community focus for developers. But what Dan and I recognized was to grow that community, we actually need to start embracing other folks in the community as well. Folks like ops people, QA engineers, designers, and even executives. Now you may be asking yourself, Joe, what does a CTO have to do with my Node community? Well, I think she has a lot to do with your Node community. Her experiences, and perspectives can add a lot of value of contributing back to the community. And that's something I want to touch on briefly here about the power of diversifying our community. Over the past 10 years, there's been a lot of research done around diversity in explicit groups. Scott Page, for example, he's a professor of complex systems at the University of Michigan. He published a book called The Difference, How the Power of Diversity Creates Better Groups, Firms, and Schools. And in this study, what he deduced from it was, no matter how able a group actually is, it's the power of diversity that will always trump that ability and make that group stronger. More recently, Philip Tetlock and Dan Gardner wrote a book called Super Forecasting, The Art of Science and prediction, so, excuse me, the art and science of prediction. This was a multi-year study with thousands of participants asking these participants questions like, what will the price of gas be in six months? Or will Israel actually inv invade the Palestinian territory in the next, say, two years? Very difficult questions to answer and forecast against. But what they realized was over time, there were these folks that were extremely good at forecasting events, and they wanted to understand why. And they realized that once they put some of these super forecasters into specific groups, the groups that were then the most accurate with their predictions were the most diverse groups. The key word that they used to describe was different of these groups. The perspectives were different. The actual perspectives they had, the more uniform, the members and perspectives of the group, they only saw marginal improvement in the judgment that they made. I believe this to be the case for Node as well, because I believe that it is the diversity of the perspectives that we can bring to the Node community that will make our magic work just like it worked for these super forecasters. So today, I'm here to say 
the more experiences, viewpoints, and perspectives of the Node community, the better the outcome for the project itself. These perspectives can come from folks like the CIO or the CTO all the way down to the developer and everyone in between. And it, to understand how we can start to embrace those folks, it's probably worthwhile to understand how we got here. Myself and my co-founder, many folks in this room, were part of this early adopter group in 2009. Now, the early adopters in the Node community were super passionate about bringing what they had to offer to the community to make this project great. The early adopters group, a globally diverse set of people with various cultural backgrounds, and they also had varying levels of technical acumen. So on the one hand, you had a systems engineer, a C++ developer, maybe even a front-end JavaScript developer, an array of technical perspectives that feed into the project. And over time, we started to see things shake out, right? Anybody remember Kiwi as a package manager? Fortunately, I know Isaac does. <laughs> Fortunately, we landed on NPM. But NPM wasn't always bundled with the node binary. That was a decision made by the community early on to provide the best experience for node developers. But over time, these early adopters started to evolve and recruit other actual developers to grow that community. And these developers started to really pop up at startups like Uber, for example, um, other startups as well, digital agencies, design agencies were using Node, and there was a smattering of companies that were in fact using Node at the enterprise level. But at that point in 2013, we started to recognize that the majority of the innovation and the improvements to the Node project were primarily driven by developer-centric perspectives. So now we talk about present day, this community is expanding bigger. At NodeSource, we talk with loads of folks in the enterprise at the operations level that are saying, love Node, our teams love Node, but how do we monitor these in production? How do we scale them? How can I actually contribute back to the Node community? Because I am, in fact, a part of this community. Ops organizations worldwide are massive. There's an opportunity to embrace them and bring them in. And as we move to 2016, we can imagine this group getting even bigger, bigger with technical executives buying in with Node. They have specific challenges that they need met. You know, they are going to invest years and lots of money into Node inside their organizations. How can they make sure that it's predictable? We see things like LTS helping that, reliable release cadences the secure nature of Node. James Snell talked about that earlier. But most importantly, protecting consumer data or customer data and improving customers' user experiences are top of mind for these folks. So these are the three major cohorts that we sort of identified, but it's, it's important to understand how can we embrace them and bring them in. They have certain challenges that are unique that if not met, will restrict our ability to grow our node community. So first and foremost, the largest cohort here, developers. Still to this day, we suffer. <laughs> we suffer when it comes to tooling. We need improvements there. We need better debugging capabilities. We need better snapshot, heap snapshot capabilities. How can we debug memory leaks, memory leaks more effectively? In addition to that, there's a huge demand for best practices in how to actually develop Node apps in the enterprise. Node Source is working with Intuit, PayPal, HomeAway, and Lending Club, to name a few, on an open coalition called EnterpriseJS. This is a forum that enables folks in the enterprise to talk about these best practices. We kicked it off this year in 2015, and the demand has been absolutely huge for 2016. And we encourage you to go to enterprisejs.io and see how you can participate and attend as well. When we talk about folks on the ops side of the business, they want better insight into what's happening with these node applications. How can they monitor them, and how can they triage them when things go wrong? What does it mean to run node in a container? 
How do I scale this across zones? They want to understand best practices around enterprise app deployment. It seems like everyone has their own way of deploying application, which is fine, but there are patterns there, specifically when it comes to Node, that could be useful to the Node community and share with other ops folks. And finally, the executives. They have a number of things that are top of mind that many developers aren't even aware of. In many cases, the folks that we've spoken with, they say, how can we actually make our engineers more productive? How can we do that with Node? And why would, why would we want to do that? It helps drive down our operating expenses, and that's important to our business. But we don't want to do that sacrificing the security of our applications. We want to still have protection for our critical apps that are running, that can protect consumer data. But we also need to make sure that applications are super performant at peak times, thus providing a great experience to the user. Finally, the thing that we've heard many times over and over again, how can I bet on this long term? And this is part of the reason we're super excited for the LTS release of Node to have come out earlier this year, because it's a sign of validation to these executives that we, we hear them, we're listening, and as a community, we're helping you, and we want you to contribute. Now, don't take necessarily just my word or Node Source's word for these challenges that these folks face. This is also being conducted by analysts. Michael Faisemeyer, Vice President of Forrester Research, says, quote, adoption of JavaScript and the Node.js runtime environment in particular sets the stage for the biggest shift in enterprise application development in more than a decade. That's astounding. And we see this as well. We see that there is a ton of innovation happening in the open source project itself. Contributions are going through the roof, which is great. We love to see that. But we also see certain needs and challenges that need to be met in the enterprise. And Node Source focuses explicitly on that. We built and solid, which is Node.js, with a set of additional capabilities wrapped around it, explicitly targeting those folks in the enterprise. We now have the option for people to generate a flame graph by pressing a button, profiling by pressing a button, taking a heap snapshot by pressing a button, getting one-up process level views by clicking on a process in our user interface. These are the challenges that the enterprise has told us, we need these solved. Please help us. And we're, we're here today to help. And in fact, it's free. You can actually download NSolid today. It's free for development. Talk to us if you want to run it in production. So I asked this audience, how can we quadruple the size of our node community? It's really easy. These are all companies that have self-identified, raised their hand and said, we are using Node, we are adopting Node, we are integrating Node, we are a part of this community, and we want to contribute, but we also have needs to be met. So I urge you to help support the enterprise Node community by reaching out and supporting the initiatives that are happening in the enterprise space. Thank you. <laughs>